So I was doing a bit of research uh, and I, f I came across these um, <laughs> I came across these articles. Here's a guy which uh, seems pretty cool, Nino Ceruti. Here's a pretty cool article, Nino Ceruti. This is on the on the topic of cigs. Nino Ceruti and and the sort of poetic and romantic side of cigarettes. No, Nino Ceruti gave elegance a good name. The Italian designer is credited with having pioneered Italian ready to wear. He was also the most elegant man many people ever met. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine just you ask a hundred people and they're like, what, what's that guy like? Uh, he's the most elegant man I ever met. Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, he basically, he became famous. He's sort of known as the, the patriarch of, of Italian um, menswear, I suppose. And he is known as being the guy who made uh, deconstructed suiting, supposedly. He kind of helps deconstructed suiting take off. Um, sort of like looser, I guess, like less less sort of uptight and perfect, kind of more, um, more uh, yeah, deconstructed, more, um, more um, yeah, more relaxed. And he, I, I think he was actually a mentor to Giorgio Armani, which is pretty interesting. So let's see. Um, basically, the only thing I want to point out with this article is that... There's people just people talking about him being elegant. He says the article says to the end he smoked like a fiend and lit his cigarettes with matches, <laughs> somehow imparting an element of chic even to this habit. He was devilishly stylish. That is pretty cool. Matches themselves already have a pretty cool and elegant and chic and sophisticated cultural significance because they're tied to, I mean, lots of lots of amazing hotels and bars and sort of outdoor nightlife experiences. Um, night, yeah, nightlife and, and um, hospitality experiences. You know, some of the most, some of the coolest bars and hotels and restaurants in the world. They've got these, you know, great matchbooks and you can kind of take them home and it's sort of a memento and it's tactile and it's cool. Um, so, so yeah, I like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm soon enough, I'm going to, I'm going to try and get my hands on some cool matches and that, that should, that, that's going to be my new little stick. If, if I'm out at, um, next time I'm out, out in Paris on my little terrace with other, you know, 27-year-old model artists, everyone's smoking cigs, looking sexy. I'm going to have the matches in the pocket of my beautiful cream deconstructed suit. And that right there is just about my, um, my vision of my perfect European lifestyle, which probably won't be as fun when I, I'm probably romanticizing it pretty heavily. It's probably going to be a little bit more, um, it's not going to be so fun when I'm actually living it, but it's cool to have the, uh, it's cool to have the vision. So, um, uh, here's a pretty great piece. Le Monde, uh, Rencontre avec Nino Ceruti, la, le patriarche de la mode italienne. This was a pretty cool piece because um, we can pick up some cool vocab. Um, so it says, uh, this is by, um, c'est écrit par Clément Guy, I believe, G-H-Y-S, however you say that, Guy. Uh, à 89 ans, Nino Ceruti est l'un des derniers de sa génération à avoir connu le temps d'avant le prêt à porter de masse. Rencontre avec l'une des figures les plus marquantes de la mode masculine du XXe siècle. All right, very nice. Uh, there's a couple, yeah, there's actually a couple of really poetic, really nice little sentences here. I thought this was quite nice. This is them walking around the um, l'usine, the, uh, the uh, factory, and, uh, and they're saying, Personne ne l'appelle Monsieur le Président. Pour la, pour la, ouf, my pronunciation is slacking here. Personne ne l'appelle Monsieur le Président. Pour la cantinière de la cafétéria qui lui réserve du tiramisu, tiramisu en douce, ou l'ouvrier qui le voit s'approcher des machines et caresser le tissu encore chaud, il est il seigneur Nino. Um, that was difficult to say. Oh my god. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I do I do like this um, this juxtaposition. That's a very cool. Um, that's a very cool little phrase. I like that. Uh, you know, you got this. You know the. Tiramisu, which is which is you know gives this nice light sweet kind of image in your in your brain on your tongue, and then he's saying you know around the machines you've got the the still kind of um, the still warm fabrics. That's a really cool juxtaposition. The tiramisu and the hot textiles. That's really cool. Um, so let's keep it kicking. Here's another little sentence here. Um, this is this is a quote by Giruti. Je suis suffisamment âgé pour avoir vu apparaître ce qui vous paraît à tous aujourd'hui banal, traditionnel, voire vieux jeu, serait-il, le visage enveloppé de fumée de cigarettes. That is quite nice. Le visage enveloppé de fumée de cigarettes. I like, um, 
that's a that's that's cool. That's a cool image. That's a cool image. That's the thing. That's the thing about Sigs, man. It's um, it's got an artistic. It really it has an aesthetic value. It looks really. It it, it simply looks cool. I mean, that's why like, part of the reason that they appear so often in in films. Um, so that's nice. You know, you can imagine the um, you know, his face and kind of a hand. You know, this the the smoke kind of ink inky kind of blurring his face. Really cool. Um, really cool image. This was this was quite nice. This was quite nice. And you might sort of laugh and find that this is all sort of overly sentimental. But hey, man, you know what's uh, what's you got to find some little pleasures in life, don't you? Il se console avec la filature de Biela. Sur son bureau, il caresse des échantillons de nouvelles matières. Lui qui adore la laine pour des raisons familiales, mais ses passions pour le ni nylon, nylon ou les tissus techniques. Jusqu'à peu, il courait encore les salons professionnels. Heureux de ne jamais quitter ce monde du textile qu'il trouve toujours aussi émouvant. Nous travaillons sur ce qu'il y a de plus proche de l'homme, sur ce qui touche sa peau. Nous travaillons sur ce qui est, sur ce qu'il y a de plus proche de l'homme, sur ce qui touche sa peau. That's quite um, that's quite nice. That's quite pretty. What is what is échantillon? Samples. Okay, little swatches. Not bad. Uh, échantillon de nouvelles matières. Okay. Yeah, it's quite cool. It is um, it is pretty romantic at the end of the day, isn't it? It's it's kind of what's what's closest to our skin. You know, it's definitely worth some thought, isn't it? It's um, it's a pretty intimate connection we have with our clothing. Nice end to the article. He is talking about how Chiruti brings um, when journalists and other designers come by the factory, he brings them to this kind of special attic room where he shows them cool samples and and jackets worn by famous people. On smoking, a été partagé par Jean Claude Briali et John Travolta. On a enveloppé le corps de Christian Bale, mais la plupart des centaines de tenues, vestes, pulls, polos, cravates n'ont aucun nom, nom associé. Il s'agit de sa garde-robe pers personnelle. Perso, <laughs> un trésor de laine, de soie et de coton. Coton. How do you say that? Coton. Coton. <laughs> coton. That's the thing. I also need to. The, the the Frenchman, man, they, they keep that mouth closed. It's not it's not coton. It's coton. It's very closed. Um, the coton. Parfois, Nino Cheruti vient tout seul dans sa caverne. Il emprunte il emprunte une cravate et c'est un gilet. Il se il se il se remémore il se remémore l'époque où il dessinait chacun de ses habits. Le temps sous l'humidité ne devrait pas ce costume où les cols de chemise n'avaient pas Johnny, Johnny, et où son élégance n'avait rien de fané. Le temps où l'humidité ne dévorait pas ses costumes, où les cols de chemise n'avaient pas Johnny, et où son élégance n'avait rien de fané. That is quite nice. Um, I didn't know the verb. Interesting. Johnny, go yellow, turn yellow. Les papiers peints jaunissent, jaunissaient avec le temps. La fumée des cigarettes a finalement jauni le mur. Le mur. Ooh, nice little sentence. That's why word reference is a is a is my favorite app, man. Even even the definitions of how to use the sentences are pretty good. La fumée des cigarettes a finalement jauni le mur. That's quite nice. Um, and this is also quite nice. Son élégance n'avait rien de fané. Um, fané is uh, is weather. I just found out before I filmed this. Um, Les pivoines. The peonies. Le, le soleil a fané les fleurs prématu, prématurément. Fané, wil, wilts, weather. It's quite, a, it's quite a strong word. Imagine being around a um, non-native English speaker and them saying weather. You'd be like, damn, you speak pretty good English, bro. Um, so, there we go. I thought that was a quite nice little article. A um, couple cool pics here. Let me let me show you guys what this guy looked like. I really I really really like this. Um, I really really like this jacket, this coat that he has on here. How sweet is that? That's very very stylish. I love the colors. It's like a brownish. Um, what's it called? Top top, brownish gray. That's quite nice with sort of red. Mm, 
little red orange burnt orange uh, stripes very cool I like it with the scarf it looks very elegant it looks really really nice no black shoes that's what I'm talking about man that's kind of I'm trying to get into this sort of um I'm done with the uh, I'm done with the miss me with all the all the um little streetwear kind of you know uh jackets and windbreakers and all that I, I want I want this I want um I want elegant thousand pound pea coats and long coats and trench coats and scarves you know I want, I want that that looks great I want to I want to be dressing like that when I went to Paris and um my cousin is studying uh cuisine cooking in, in Paris which is amazing and he um I saw some of the I saw I saw a guy like around my age maybe 30 dressed somewhat similarly to this nice long coats banging pair of loafers beanie cool glasses it was on the phone if it wasn't on the phone I would have um I would have definitely hit on him and said hey man looking sexy can I get a can I get a quote can I get a quote what, who are you where are you headed um this jacket is pretty badass look at this this is this is just the rent this is just the picture they have set up with Jeruti 1881 which is the year the brand was started I guess how nice is this this is really cool God imagine seeing someone wearing this in the streets of Madrid or Paris or Berlin or New York like damn son where'd you get that this is really really cool I might, I might, I might try drawing this how good are these colors Wow that's really, 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 really cool. I like that a lot. Um, all right, last but not least, if you have, <laughs> I think everyone's had enough of my um, of my not entirely natural French accent. It's gotten a lot better. Let me tell you what. If I tried to, if I tried to say all, um, if I tried to read that article six months ago, I would have really been fighting for my life. Um, but let's hear some native French. This is an episode of um, of uh, Le Goudem, which is a little bit. I was actually asking myself, Le Goût M, M, M Le Magazine, Le Magazine du Monde. Du monde. Um, I was actually asking myself, how do you, all right, it's, I think it's pretentious. Pretentious, okay, pre pretentious. It's, it's a bit, you know, it's got a bit of a pretentiousness to it, um, just because, I don't know, you know, lots of the, lots of the people they interview, are, they, they, they're, in, they're in sort of society, you know, they've, you know, editors at Vanity Fair and Vogue, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of, it's the whole sort of, insular insular um insular fashion culture where everyone just uh, the heads are big right but some people are some people are really cool anyway this um this little piece was nice this is with um avec l'actrice this is c'est la première invitée du um, du podcast c'est l'actrice mi marina foy another good question how do you say this surname marina foy's foy's Let's get to her little. She she has a she has a nice little take on um, on cigarettes on cigarette culture. Mais bon, après moi je trouve que la cigarette, je trouve que c'est sexy. Franchement, Catherine Deneuve elle est sublime tout le temps. Mais quand elle fume, je veux dire il y a un truc pour moi c'est érotique quoi. Les femmes qui fument, je trouve ça irrésistible. Et puis je trouve que dans notre société d'aujourd'hui normative. Pas de gluten, 5 fruits, 5 légumes par jour. Ça me, ça m'ennuie profondément cette manière de, de, de penser que le bien-être, comme s'il venait d'un menu équilibré. C'est pas vrai. Il y a des menus déséquilibrés qui sont beaucoup plus équilibrants que des choses équilibrées. Je veux dire, le, le, se battre sans arrêt contre ses pulsions, ses travers et tout ça, ça rend des gens qui sont fatigués. Moi, j'ai tourné avec des acteurs qui sont complètement junk. Donc ils n'arrivent pas tout à fait à l'heure, ils sont un peu bourrés, mais n'empêche que quand ça tourne, il se passe un truc. J'y tourne avec des acteurs qui sont propres, qui arrivent à l'heure, qui sont polis et à qui je me fais chier. Ce que je veux dire, c'est qu'il n'y a pas de règles là-dessus et que euh, les deux espèces de mantras de l'époque, euh, s'occuper de soi et de... de aller dans des spas c'est pas mon le spa c'est pas mon truc quoi ouais, je, je, et essayer de minimiser ça. tous les risques aussi ça fait des goûts assez plats ouais enfin, euh... et ça fait des goûts plats et puis moi alors franchement par expérience sans avoir le goût du risque le risque il est tous les jours moi des morts violentes et des morts brutales j'en ai tout le temps dans ma vie donc essayez de me raisonner là où vous voulez ça ne prendra pas parce que mon corps il a enregistré ces violences là donc je, je n'arrive pas à 
comment dire je ouais je n'arrive pas à minimiser euh, et en même euh, le temps risque. enfin oui vous, comme vous disiez vous avez traversé des, des choses difficiles dans votre that's pretty cool how hilarious is that pronunciation complètement junk <laughs> she really stresses that that you complètement junk um, I thought that that was she she's spitting facts how true is that she's saying um, she's saying this kind of this kind of overarching imposing culture we have where it's you know the yoga and the salad bowls and the don't smoke don't you know it's got to be healthy and tan and the you know it's it's um it's super it's super unhealthy and some people are just you know if you if you take if you take away you know the sugar and, and a cigarette and a coffee and a um and a sweet treat and alcohol right it's like they they hit they these people are going to lose their minds like what, what else do you have to live for you know just recently i tried to um i wanted to i've had some pretty bad um i've been my my fit my skincare regime has been pretty slack i sort of fell off my um, my Curology subscription, my fancy face care subscription. That probably has something to do with it. And I, I really wasn't doing a good job washing my face every single morning and night. So I was only doing one or the other. But anyway, I was like, maybe it's my diet. So maybe I should try cutting out sugar. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to do it cold turkey this entire month. I'm going to do no alcohol, no coffee, and no no sweet treats, right? Only The only sweet treats would be like a, like strawberries and yogurt or something. And, uh, and I realized about two days after, I was like, hmm, okay. So I, I, I'm, I'm cutting out everything that makes me happy. <laughs> it's like, this is insufferable. Like, get, let, me, let me do something. You know what I mean? Can I have a glass of, can I have a cup of tea at least? Like, like what, I wonder what's going to happen to my mental health if I remove everything that makes me happy. Um, so I think, I think that's kind of what she's alluding to is like in this culture, we, we villainize and say, no, no cigarettes, no sugar, no gluten, no, no nothing. It's like, all right, what, what's left? You know, what's left in life if I take away everything fun and delicious and the treats? Um, So I think I think that was pretty cool, and that that was kind of echoed another article in the New York Times about kind of the in the downtown Manhattan culture. You know, you have other people my age kind of echoing her same sentiment, where it's like I'm tired of the of the mental health warriors and the and the, it has to be yoga and perfect health and this. Sh you know, shut up. You know, let, let me let me have a cigarette. Let me have a cigarette. Let me have some ice cream. Let me have a pizza. You know what I mean? Let me let me enjoy my life, um, which isn't always healthy. You know. And on and and on un, taking unhealthy decisions sometimes is a pretty healthy way to live a life. So um so yeah I think I thought it was really cool and I think that that's kind of what I'm talking about. I know um for some more you know if you're a parent or kind of a more conservative person and you're sort of horrified that I'm entertaining the idea of cigarettes. You know there there are some you know within moderation you know something like this sort of Benjamin Edgar one cigarette in a blue moon after a nice meal. You know, that's I think it's a really healthy way to live life. I really do. Um, so that is our first, um, yeah, that's kind of our second, uh, big topic of the night and I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm excited that we get to talk about, um, we get to talk about everything from, uh, re reading a bit of articles in English, um, talking about the product and, and doing a bit of my, me, me, me experiencia en España con mi, mi primera impresión de, de las, de los cigarros de uh, las, las chicas francesas en español. Eso está bien para que practique un poco el, el español. Et luego, a little bit of um, un peu de français avec, uh, avec l'article. Uh, it's not bad. That's kind of the idea of the show.